Vietnam is a country sitting on a modern-day treasure. The Southeast Asian nation holds one-fifth of the world's rare earth reserves. That's around 22 million tonnes of the essential metals that are used for manufacturing semiconductors. These tiny electronic chips are everywhere today, found in our mobile phones, our computers and even in our car batteries. There are thousands of components inside a chip. Before sending products to customers, I have to make sure that none of the components are burned out or defective. This Vietnamese factory aims to become a major player in this rapidly growing market. Min has been working here for two years. At just 27 years old, he is part of a new generation of engineers that the country wants to showcase. It took me some time to adapt to these machines. They are at the cutting edge of new technology and they allow me to further develop my skills. Semiconductors are a key cog in the global economy. Ten years ago, the market was worth around 330 billion euros. This year, it's expected to be nearly double, reaching 600 billion euros. Today, Asia dominates semiconductor production, with nearly 80% of all chips produced in the region. Leading the pack are China, Taiwan and South Korea. Whilst Vietnam is currently a secondary player, the country hopes to become a credible alternative in this highly strategic market. Harry Trin runs a company that specializes in electronic chips. Our country benefits from a very strategic geographical position. We're about four to five hours away by plane from all the major semiconductor powerhouses. And our other strength is our quality workforce, young people who are passionate about technology. In just one year, a dozen Vietnamese universities have launched specialized programs in the semiconductor industry, responding to the urgent need for more engineers. The government's aim is to train 50,000 specialists by 2035. It's an ambitious challenge matching the goal set by Taiwan, one of the main industry leaders. At the end of the course, you'll need to produce a chip that looks like this. In this university in Hanoi, student numbers have exploded, from just 700 students in 2020 to 3,000 this year. We want to increase this parameter, right? So, what do we increase first? Everything students learn here will be directly applicable when they start working. It's very practical, designing semiconductor chips and understanding how to produce them. Whilst they are continuing with their studies for now, the next generation of Vietnamese engineers are already highly sought after. I focus solely on my studies. It's the most important thing for me, but it's also very hard. Thanks to my efforts, I just secured a two-year contract abroad. Nine of these students have already landed jobs with Samsung in South Korea after they graduate. They study an average of 10 hours a day, and some of them even live together in shared housing. This field has high standards, so even though there's a strong demand in the sector, you can't just graduate and start working immediately. You need to gain experience, for example at Samsung. Working there is a dream for me. With a young and motivated workforce, Vietnam is rapidly gaining an advantage in the semiconductor industry. And with China currently dominating the sector, countries such as the United States are eager to find new strategic partners. There's a trade war between the United States and China. As soon as the US imposes restrictions, it has a major impact on the Chinese economy. Under those conditions, we could become a major trading partner. Vietnam is still a small player, but big contracts are starting to come their way. American companies like Amcor Technology, which specializes in semiconductor assembly and testing, have already invested nearly 2 billion euros in the country.